Okay, in this short tutorial, I'm going to do three of them. I'm going to do uh, fixed at both ends, open at one end, and then open at both ends uh, examples to help you understand uh, standing waves and how to do calculations related to them. So with standing waves, we learned that uh, when waves are produced, uh, periodic waves in a, in, a, uh, in a surface or in some sort of medium, if they hit the other end, they reflect back on the opposite side and the incident waves and the reflected waves interact with each other via interference. And based on the principle of superposition, you get um, areas of constructive and destructive interference. And the areas of completely destructive interference we call nodes, and the areas of completely constructive interference we call antinodes. The positions of these are based on the frequency and the speed of the waves in the material are very specific. Now, they look like they're standing because the antinodes don't move and the nodes stay fixed. Uh, however, we do realize that that's the superposition of underlying waves, which are, in fact, transferring energy through the material. Now, we're going to see something called the fundamental frequency um, in just a minute. Uh, the first resonance length, or what we call the first harmonic. So, you know, sometimes we'll hear it called the first resonance length. Um, and so this could also be called the first harmonic. Okay. And then down here, you might see the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth, fifth, sixth, goes on and on and on. Now, if you have a wave that's fixed at both ends, what we, and the, this is called the fundamental frequency. So this happens at a very specific frequency called F1, um, that the waves will produce this type of, uh, type of wave. Now, if we were in class, we'd be able to see that, you know, if you try this, is like a skipping rope, I guess you could kind of think about if you were looking at a wave that you are vibrating and in a material and it's fixed at both ends, we said before, well, if it's fixed at both ends, you have to have a node. Okay. And if it's at the fundamental frequency, meaning that you, you're moving your hand or, the, or you're vibrating this material at such a low frequency, right? Very low frequency that it produces a node here, a node there, and only one antinode in between, like this, right? Now it's just oscillating back and forth. That is called the fundamental frequency. That's the lowest frequency that you can get for a vibrating uh, material that has nodes at both ends, okay? You can't do anything else. If you don't match the frequency properly, then you don't get a node here and a node here and an anti-node. You just get nothing. It just kind of like wiggles out. So if you start trying to throw waves here and reflect them back on each other and the frequency is too high or too low and it's not right, you won't get a standing wave. If you've ever tried to do skip rope and you're like, you know, you're moving the rope and you don't get the right frequency of rotation, then you don't get a perfect anti-node and two nodes at both ends. Now, depending on the speed of the wave and the frequency and all that sort of stuff, this happens, this length between the node and the anti-node is called L1. Okay. And if I were to ask you, looking at L1 here, what do we say the distance is between a node and a node? Well, if you remember, this would extend out this way to finish one full wavelength. So we've only got half of the wavelength here. So that's lambda over two. Now, some of you like to write that as 0.5 lambda. Okay. So if you were to measure this distance from here to here, we call that the first resonance length L1. How big is it? Well, whatever the wavelength is divided by two, and that tells you what that distance is between that node and that node. And that only happens at a very specific frequency, what's called the fundamental frequency, the first harmonic, and we label it F1. Now up here, you see this little equation. And now some of you are gonna love doing this with the equation. Some of you are gonna love drawing the pictures and doing it with the pictures instead. I like using the equations, uh, but I also like drawing the pictures, right? So I'm sort of toss up between the two. And since you're learning this, I'll teach it both ways, and you can pick the one that suits you best. Now, N stands for the harmonic, okay? So N is the harmonic, or the, like that, okay? Harmonic. So we're at the first harmonic, or the first resonance length. This is the first resonance length, and, um, and this happens at the fundamental frequency, F1. What we'll notice is if you substitute a 1 in there, L1, and then you put a 1 where that N is, 
oh, look at that, lambda over 2, which is exactly what you'd expect. So L1 equals lambda over 2, and it matches our diagram. All right, second harmonic. Well, if you increase the frequency a bit, okay, if you increase the frequency, just move your hand a little quicker, vibrate the material just a little at a higher frequency, you'll notice that you'll get a node right in the middle. And again, in class, we would do all these demonstrations and you'd see all that and it makes a lot of sense. And that's why I'd watch those other videos as well because they actually, they have demonstrations of all this stuff. You would get a node here, a node here, and a node here. You would get an antinode here and an antinode here. Now, the antinode is also at the bottom. It doesn't matter where you show it, but that's it. Okay. Now, this is the L2, second harmonic. There is, so this top one only had half a wavelength in it. But look at this one. This goes from a node to a node and back up. Oh, well, that's one wavelength. And the distance between a node and a node is half a wavelength half a wavelength, so we've got one wavelength here. So we've got one full wavelength is that L2. So it's the second harmonic, L2 equals, if we put in a two where the N is, two lambda over two, L2 equals lambda, and it matches. Now, what's interesting about this is that the second harmonic this, the frequency, you have to double the frequency, the fundamental frequency. Why does this make sense? Well, look at the wavelength was big here. Now the wavelength's gone down by half. If this was, let's say this was 10 meters, this wavelength is only five meters. So this wavelength here, like if it's, sorry, if it's uh, five meters from here to here, right, then the wavelength is double that because uh, it's, you know, it's quite large. So if it's, so if L1 was five, five times two is 10. So the wavelength is actually 10. If I double the frequency, I half the wavelength because V equals F lambda. I mean, that's an important thing to remember, right? So if you double the wavelength, you half the frequency. If you double the frequency, you have to half the wavelength because the speed is constant in a given material. And that's a fundamental feature of waves. If that speed doesn't change and you half in the wavelength becomes half as big, the frequency has to go up by two. If this becomes a third as big, that has to go up by three, and so on and so forth. And so it's very simple to understand that. And you can kind of just grasp that idea. Well, what's F3? F3 is the fundamental frequency, or it's three times the fundamental frequency for the third resonance length. So if the frequency here, let's say you're moving your hand back and forth two times per second, here you'd have to go four times per second. Here you'd have to go um two times three six times per second and that would give you now what if you triple the frequency then you have to you better get a you know a, a, a different value for the notice i'm just adding nodes node node node, node, antinode, antinode, antinode. Now here, it's it a little trickier. There is one and a half. Well, that's a nice voice crack. There's one and a half wavelengths in there. And you're like, oh, okay, well, what's one and a half? Well, one and a half, so L3 is three lambda over two because three over two is one and a half wavelengths so there's one and a half wavelengths in there half a wavelength to half a wavelength half a wavelength so that's one and a half wavelengths let's try it with the formula l3 equals three lambda over two and therefore it's 1.5 lambda again Try and use the um, fractions. Don't, though, I wouldn't get used to using the, the numbers, but I mean, it doesn't make it wrong. It's just you should really practice your fractions. Okay. Now, um, you can see that the, um, you know, 
the, at the fundamental frequency, we were at half a wavelength. Now we're at three halves of a wavelength, um, which is three times as small. And therefore the frequency went up by three. Okay. Fourth resonance length of the fourth harmonic. You can get the idea that the fourth harmonic is four times the fundamental frequency. Um, and there should be now, this is it's starting to get tricky because you got to find, I guess for this one, we just have to add, there we go. So I put one in the middle, even space them out and you get this. And remember there always has to be an anti node, or sorry, nodes at the ends because it's a fixed ends on both sides. So that's N, N. Okay. And what's your prediction for L4? Well, there's one, two wavelengths in there. Right. And if you want to sketch it, you can say, oh, okay, well, there's one and two. Now notice the wavelengths are getting pretty small here, right? The wavelength up here was half. Like that's a big wavelength that was like huge. And it got, it went down by half, you know, it just kept getting smaller and smaller. These wavelengths are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, which means the frequency is going up and up and up. So the faster you vibrate the thing, the more of these nodes and anti-nodes that you get. Plug into the formula at the top, L4 is four times lambda over two. L4 is two lambda for fixed at both ends. Okay, let's try a question and then we'll stop this video and we'll start another one for um, open at both ends and open at one end. Okay, we have a guitar string. Let's say it's 50 centimeters long. It's vibrating at the third harmonic with a frequency of 550 hertz. Calculate the speed of the wave. So we're trying to figure out V we know that V is equal to F lambda, the universal wave equation. We know that the frequency that it's vibrating at is the third harmonic, okay? And that means that it's 550 hertz. Doesn't mean it's that, sorry, that's just what it is. The L3 is 50 centimeters long. Okay, so there we go. So we know we've got a string that's 50 centimeters long. It's vibrating at the third harmonic. And the third harmonic is down here. It's this one right here, if you recall, first, second, third. So at the third harmonic, I'm just going to be lazy. What you would typically do is draw this. And if you download the, the notes, you'll see that you can, um, you know, you can see that on the actual, um, I put the notes up with them, with them completed as well. So you can always look at that. Um, yeah, and so calculate the speed of wave. So in fact, the notes on this, I just looked at the notes. Um, it's got different questions. It's got it at the, at, the, at the first harmonic or the fundamental frequency. Ours isn't that, so we're doing ours a little bit different. Okay, so now what we're going to look at is we know that in this wave, if we drew it out, that you can see right here, we know that there are, that L3 is, so if we start to solve this, we know that L3 has three halves of a wavelength in there. And if there are three halves of a wavelength in there, then we can finish solving this. We know the frequency, we know what L3 is, so we can find the wavelength. So that's 50 centimeters times two, divided by three is the wavelength. And if you put that into your calculator, we get 100 divided by three. So we go 100 divided by three. Sorry about that. That's my kids are not happy. Um, and that's that the wavelength is 33.33 centimeters. Okay, so let's see if that makes sense. That tells us that if the wavelength is 33.3 centimeters, that's from here to here, that's how far that is. So uh, the next little bit is, you know, a half of that is the total amount of distance. And it says that our distance was 50 centimeters. So from here to there is 50 centimeters, right? So from there to there is 50 centimeters. And 33.33 centimeters is the distance of, you know, two thirds of that distance. So we now found the wavelength. So we have the frequency, we have the wavelength and it asks to find the speed. Well, the speed in this case 
is V equals F lambda. The frequency is 550 hertz times 33.33 centimeters. Now remember, hertz is one over seconds. So the speed in the wave is 550 times, so 550 times 33.33 is very fast. centimeters per second divided by 100 because we want to get to meters per second is 183 meters per second about that okay so it's pretty fast and it's rounded so that's how you do those types of questions they're not too hard to do as long as you know how to draw the diagram or use the equation to figure out what the actual um uh you know what the distance is and being able to tell how many wavelengths are in there that's that's the real trick of these types of questions all right so we'll try the other ones next and um see how that goes